Yo, welcome back to another episode of Vash Reacts. Today we got CJ the Champ. Light Yagami, anime's daily serial killer. Two. So, some people about to hate what I'm going to say. Right, let me make this full screen. In my opinion, I agree with Light. Just saying. He had the death note. He had the power to kill all the world's greatest criminals, predators, PDFs, and more. But it got to his head. He went overboard. But uh, let's see what she, CJ the champ say. We gonna dive in. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for another. And also, Death Note is one of the greatest anime, greatest animes to, to ever exist. Another installment of anime's deadliest serial killers, and today we dive into the case the of Kira the most case. notorious serial killer in anime history, and Light that is Yagami. none other than Kira, aka Light Yagami. And my God, with all the evidence and the amount of victims this man racked up, this case is gonna be a beefy one. So let's stop wasting time. So without further ado. It's time to dive in. Let's to do the it. Kira case. Light Yagami. One is spoilers ahead. If you haven't seen Death Note by now, you're fucking missing out. Death Note should be your first, your very first anime. One of the most diabolical niggas to ever exist. A man with a kill count that ranges in the six figures. And Dang. had a whole cult. Praising this guy, thinking that he's the Messiah. I need somebody to help me glorify God and stretch out your arms. Is that Rallo Goodman? Anyway. But you have to wonder how the actual f did this generic as background character looking toothpick built ass nigga become one of the most notorious mass murderers in fiction? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is why we are here. So, first off, we need to know what the hell the weapon was to commit all these homicides. And that, of it course, was a is book. the death note. Now, I'm pretty sure everybody knows how this thing works. Yep. But if you forgot, here's a quick refresher. The human whose name is written in this note shall die. The note will not take effect unless the writer... That first sentence is enough to, for you to put that book down already. If you keep reading but on that first sentence, you know you're in for a wild ride. There has the person's face in their mind when writing his or her name. Therefore, people sharing the same name will not be affected. Mm. If the cause of death is written within 40 seconds of writing the person's name, it will happen. And finally, after writing the cause of death, details of the death should be written in the next 6 minutes and 40 seconds. Now, with all that explained, we can now move into the first major incident. And that is, of course, the first confirmed 52 victims. <laughs> Local crackhead. When Light first found the death note, when it conveniently dropped right in front of him, he thought to himself, man, this is some bullshit. What is this, a sick joke? Who the hell would believe this? But Light being a little curious George decided to take the book. So later on, when Light got home, bro was a little bored. So he ended up thinking in his head, mm, I mean, it doesn't hurt to try it out, right? So Light's intrusive thoughts took over. So he ended up turning on the news and hearing, Breaking news! A local crackhead is holding eight children hostage at a daycare! So Light said, F*** it. Let's write this guy's name down. Local I mean, he's a crackhead. criminal after all. So 40 seconds later, the news... And he's still a crackhead. At the end of the day, he was a crackhead. News comes back on and says, Breaking news! The children have been set free and the assailant just over and died. <laughs> oh, this man light was shook. He was like, no, 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 no. It, it was just coincidence, right? <laughs> no, no fucking way, right? But it was no coincidence. This local crackhead was the first victim of light. But light needed more proof because he thought it just had to be a random coincidence that bro had a heart attack when he wrote his name down. So later on that same night, while Light is walking back from cram school, he ends up seeing this lady walking, and these bikers come up and start to harass her. So ugly biker bastard right here ends up saying, Hey there, pretty lady. <laughs> How about you come fuck with a real nigga and come in hot? Who uh, spit on that thing? <laughs> <laughs> so these freaky ass niggas try to redo a healer shorty in the 
parking lot. While Light was in the convenience store watching the whole thing like, not on my watch, you 69 gods. So he wrote Bro's name down and made the cause be of accidental death, and the rest was history. Old girl breaks away while ugly bastard tries to track her down. Watch your camera. Watch your camera. <laughs> to another world, much <laughs> And just like that, light caught another body, and this man was stunned. He was like, no, 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 no fucking way. <laughs> I, I, I just summoned Trapcoon. That means I must be a fucking god. <laughs> and at this point, light's god complex was born. This man went back to the crib, locked the door looking like he about to beat that thing, and said, I'm about to cleanse this world of its garbage. So this man looked up a list of criminals and just started getting active. This nigga started writing so fast, it looked like he had an essay due the next day. And he just started racking up bodies. Yeah, that pen thing, when he be one of the greatest things I ever saw in my life. Once I saw that shit, I'm like, oh, this motherfucker's serious. Going crazy thinking in his head. Yeah, that ugly bastard that was talking to that little girl the other day. Enjoy being unemployed with Dr. Disrespect. And this man went through the That's whole spot just writing down names until two whole pages were full. And look at this man breathing hard as hell, looking like he just ran a 5K. And just off of that one night. This man killed 52 criminals. Now here's the wild part. That was just criminals that died of heart attacks. Cause when Interpol got this information, they was like, there could be some people that were unaccounted for. So that death toll could have easily been over 100. So after Light racked up all of his first victims, the name Kira started spreading like wildfire because Light was constantly oh, dropping off shit. niggas. Every single day he was killing multiple criminals and people all around the world was supporting this man. They had Reddit threads and Discord servers just glazing this nigga. And this just amped up his god complex even more. Bro, just looking at this Light. Yeah, that's right. Glaze me, nigga. Polish this willy. And of course, now he got this A1 instigating Shinigami Ryuk attached to his hip the whole time now. But even though Light was killing only criminals, at the end of the day, it was still murder. And this is when this man fell for the trap. Now, this but is if it was just cr but it's like, how do you feel bad for a criminal? Like, that charges can be okay, that charges can be some out of pocket wild shit. Light take care of it. Now, that makes Light the murderer, of course, because he just killed that person. But it's a criminal. This man could have did the most evilest shit in the world. This man could have took, like, the first crackhead. He took 40 kids hostage or some shit. One of them kids could have, you know, croaked. But, but he, Light took his life. Bro, if Light had the power to cleanse the world, I'm I'm gonna make some people mad about moment that. Where you just think people to yourself, mad about that. what if Light never made this crucial mistake? And that mistake was killing Linda L. Taylor on live TV. So a Yo, you kids are on their way. I bet. A worldwide public service announcement comes on TV, and this man announces himself as L. But obviously, this ain't L. But Light didn't know. So Lynn L. Taylor starts speaking and saying, Good afternoon, world. My name is Lynn L. Taylor. Kira, if you're watching this, we have a message for you. You are evil, and you are just a mindless serial killer. And I'm gonna bring your punk ass to justice. So while Light is watching this, here come this instigating ass nigga. Ryu, Light. I'm not gonna lie, that nigga pressing your shit right now. So what the man, fuck? Man, Ryu used to right stay star and shit. this man, Light. His ego is challenged. You think I'm fucking evil? Quit all that fucking yapping, nigga. I am God, and you can suck my divine dick six feet under. So Light got to work quick. He wrote Bro's name down in a heartbeat, and after he finished, he was like, "Yeah, that's right. I'll show the world what happens if you defy me." So 40 seconds later, and Lynn L. Taylor has a heart attack, croaks over, and dies. And here go Light thinking he got it in the bag. What's wrong? Huh? Get the fuck up, huh? But see, you was talking that shit. What's good, Foggy? Huh? Wow, Kira, I can't believe it. You was one dumbass nigga. You really think I get my introverted ass on TV and f***ing press you like this? You one stupid ass nigga, and now I know all your shit. The dude you just killed? Yeah, he was due for execution today anyway, so he could go f*** off. Also, this is not a worldwide broadcast. We only broadcasting this in the Tonto region of Japan. So guess what, motherfucker? I know exactly where you at. So come on, motherfucker. Go on ahead and 
Caught your, caught his ass. Set his ass up. Don't be a pussy bitch. Show me you got some balls. You need a name in her face. Fuck. Fuck. Set his ass up. He got your ass. Could it be me though? Hero notice on my mama. I'm coming for your bitch ass, and I'm gonna put your nigga ass in the slammer. So after this man L played light like a fool and pressed the living hell out of him, the investigation on Kara went into full effect. So this is where we move on to our next set of evidence and next set of victims. And our first key victim is Ray Pinberg. Now, Ray Pinberg was a FBI agent. Yeah, this case got so big that this man L ended up getting help from the FBI to come solve this case. Because that's how horrendous this shit got. Because Light was murdering like 23 niggas a day at this point. He was dropping at least one body an hour and just toying with L the whole time. So L suspected that whoever Kira was had to have ties to the police because how the hell would this person be getting all this information on these criminals? And what do you know? Light's dad is the police chief. So L basically made every single person that had ties to the police be kept under surveillance by the FBI. And Ray Pember's job was to survey Light. And obviously Light didn't need this type of heat. So Light decided, I'm gonna have to put this man in a coffin. So Light came up with this devious ass plan and that was the bus jacking incident. So for this, Light needed a guinea pig. So he found another local crackhead on the most wanted list, Kichiro Otsuruda. I'm not gonna lie, I just butchered that man's name. So the <laughs> second part of his plan, he needed a shorty. So this man dialed up one of his shorties on his roster and called her and said, Hello? I'm on here stroking my dick. I got So the next day, Light ends up meeting the girl to go on their date to Disneyland. And of course, Ray Pember is right behind them following them, all according to Light's plan. So they end up getting on the bus and Ray Pember sits right behind them. So about a good 15 minutes later, they stop at the next bus stop and the local crackhead gets on the bus. And this man wasted no time. He cocked back the gun and said, Hey, right, everybody, sit the fuck down and do your best Rosa Parks impersonation. I'm a blue. Oh, this nigga brains out. But, but, but sir, please. I ain't playing with you, nigga. So this man called up Disneyland and said, bring out all the cash you made today and make sure the nigga that's bringing out got on a Minnie Mouse costume. Sir, we're able to comply with your demands, but why the Minnie Mouse costume? So I can get my nut off, nigga. Hey, no yo, freaky so ass nigga. is high out of his mind and going wild. This man, Ray Pimber, leans over and says, all right, yo, like you said, stay calm and do your best Rosa Parks impersonation. My name is Ray Pimber, FBI. So when this man Light looked at this man's ID, bro just smirked and thought in his head. <laughs> Stupid ass nigga, all according to plan. So Light digs in his pocket and drops a piece of paper on the floor. So the crackhead's like, the fuck you moving for you little shit? Do you, do you want me to blow your brains out, nigga? But Light meant to drop that paper because that was a piece of the death note. So old boy turns around and starts tweaking because he ends up seeing Ryuk behind him. So bro just starts emptying the map, trying to shoot this man Ryuk, but obviously it ain't working. So bro ran up to the bus driver and said, hello, get me off this bus. So the bus driver stops. Bro runs out into the street, and Cartoon comes flying down the street and splatters this nigga's guts like the Nickelodeon logo. <laughs> and of course, of course, Light is sitting on this bus with no emotion, looks at his watch, and said, 11.45 on the dot, right on schedule. Light staged this entire bus jacking. Because using the death note, he made this man board the bus, attempt to hijack it, then jump out and get hit by a car due to accidental death. And then at the end of this, Ray Pember thinks nothing suspicious of this man. Because he thought, huh, I mean, he couldn't be Kara. Because he would have just offed him when he got on the bus. So now this man does not suspect Light. And Light has his name. So after Light boomed the second local crackhead, it was time to move into phase three of his plan. If you have a child 12 or older and you like for them to get into the best university possible, I have something. So about a week later at a subway station, he ends up seeing Ray Pember walking. So Light puts on his hood looking like he about to hit a lick. So he gets for real, him and says, like a Ray goon. Pember, don't move a fucking muscle or I'll drop your ass right here. So Light tells this man that he's Kira and to prove it, he said, look over there. You see now, what if he would have had a shicey on? I would have been scared as shit. Light with a shicey.
Evil time. That nigga with them glasses on, I'ma drop that nigga right now. And bro right here starts having a heart attack and dies. Bro straight up off this man in the public eye. And then Light told him, don't worry, you shouldn't feel bad for him. He was a registered sex offender and a PDF file. Caught him talking to three little boys the other day. So Light gives him an earpiece and tells him to board a train. So later on when he boards the train, Light tells him to open the envelope. And he sees all these papers. So Light says in his ear, I want you to write your boss's name in every single FBI agent that came here in Japan. Do it, I'ma drop your ass and your bitch right the fuck now. So Ray Pember writes down all the names. So after this, Light told him, wait 30 minutes and then get off the train. So 30 minutes pass, Ray Pember gets off the train and it happens. <laughs> and right before the lights went out, this man looked up and saw who Kira was the whole time and thought before he died, you've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> So after the lights went out for Ray Pember, so did the rest of the FBI's. Cause the sheet that Ray Pember wrote those names on were death note sheets. So the other 11 agents that were in Japan and his boss shortly died right after Ray. And just like that, Light Yagami did the unthinkable. This man bitched the FBI because the director of the FBI calls L and tells him, Mr. L, um, I'm sorry, but America's gonna have to pull out of this one. This shit's getting out of hand. Now it seems that Light is ready to make his victory lap, but there was one problem. There was a loose end, and that loose end was Ray Pember's fiance, a former FBI agent. So she did some snooping around and quickly figured out whoever Kira was had to be on that bus. Also, she ended up figuring out that he can kill in other ways besides a heart attack. So a couple days later, she goes to the police station because she's basically figured out this entire thing. All she needs to know was who was on the bus. Ew. So when she goes to the police station and asks to speak to Light's dad, who was- Nigga, that was the fan bus and- don't ask me how I know. I got an Instagram. Don't ask me. I know. Over the case, just by coincidence, Light walks in and overhears her talking about it. So Light was like, who the hell is this bitch? So he walks up to her and tells her, hi, excuse me, ma'am. My name's Light. Pleasure to meet you. You see, my dad is the chief of the police force, so I can help you out real quick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So they end up walking outside and they start chatting it up. So the first thing Light asks is, uh, Miss Beautiful Miss, um, can I have your name? So she says, um, yeah, um, my name's Shoko Maki. So Light already has the name. So now his plan was to just talk her up, figure out what she knows, and if she knew too much, he was gonna offer. So they kept on talking and she just kept on yapping, but everything she said was right. And the real stinger was, she said that, um, yeah, um, so my fiance said that he showed somebody his ID and he wasn't supposed to so whoever he showed his id to yeah um that's most definitely kara so light was like shit she knows way too much she got to die now because <laughs> if they pull up in bus cameras lights cooked so here go this sinister ass nigga so bro starts asking her questions but in reality he's writing down her name so light thinks he's got her but a couple of more seconds pass and she's still alive Nani? so light ends up figuring out because ryuk's ass was laughing at him the whole time that she used the alias so that was not her real name so light is starting oh, to panic it is do or die right now because if she gets back to the police station he's done so he pulled this last trick out of his ass and told her well you see ma'am um it's gonna be actually impossible for you to go back to the police station because they're very busy right now but it's okay though because i'm on the care of task force oh my gosh really yeah i have connections to l too so this pinocchio long-nosed lying ass nigga basically baited her and told her, you know what, ma'am, you are really smart. You should join the task force with us. All you gotta do is show me your ID so I can check your credentials. So obviously, she jumped at the idea because she wants to bring her fiance's killer to justice. Right. So she whips out her ID and it's over. Light saw her real name, wrote it down, and made the cause be of unaliving herself. So right before tragedy was about to strike, she asked this man, um, why do you keep on looking at your watch? Oh, because I'm Kira, duh, stupid bitch. <laughs> and it was over. She ended up walking away and she's going to underlive herself in GTA. And while she's walking away, this sick nigga is just talking and saying, oh ma'am, um, what's wrong? D you still need to use my phone, right? I thought we were gonna catch Kira. And what makes this even more tragic, they never found her body. We don't know what the hell happened to her. All we know is that she unalived herself. And with that, the bus jacking incident comes to a close. 
Yeah, once he got like cocky to kill the FBI agent, I think that's when he, you know, people was on his ass. I think after he killed him and every, yeah, I think everybody Alrighty, chop, chop, started chop, realizing. Moving on, we got more people dying. Flip the board for our next set of evidence. Now, hmm, those fake ads really drive you mad, huh? The game looks so fun in the ads. Yeah. Oh, obviously, we know Light's biggest opposition is L. One of the smartest characters in fiction. This nigga's anime Sherlock Holmes. And this man was on Light's ass 24-7. Because he always had a hunch that Light was Kira. I mean, he literally walked up to Bro and said, Hey, man, uh, my name's L. And I think there's a 5% chance that you're Kira. What? I, I'm not sure all the way, but there's like a five percent chance, bro. He had this man join the Kira task force to keep an eye on him more. He even had cameras set up in his room, watching him 24/7. So you know damn well that he was watching him yanking his shit. <laughs> and don't be acting like I'm reaching. You think Light was cracking Misa? Fuck no, he hated this bitch. Speaking of that, let me go ahead and introduce the accomplice, the second Kira, Misa. This girl suffers from brain damage. And she's just deeply in love with this nigga. And the reason why is because her parents were murdered. And lo and behold, guess who brought justice to the murderer? Yeah. Kara. Nigga. And how she got a death note is even crazier. One night she was walking home and she got approached by some crazy ass stalker nigga. And he was ready to kill her. So a Shinigami named Jealous that was weirdly in love with her decided to save her life and kill the stalker at the cost of his life. So Rim decided, uh, I might as well give her the death note. He would have wanted it this way. And Tada, Miss Brain Rot, became the second Kira. So Light decided to use her because she had the Shinigami eyes and she could see any person's name just by looking at them. But at the cost of a half in your lifespan though. But Light knew he needed her to dep in his bag so he could kill people 10 times easier. So he made her pose as his girlfriend. So time passes, and one day, Elle ends up capturing Misa, suspecting her of being the second Kira, because they raided her apartment and just found a bunch of shit. So she got put in confinement. So Light said, F it, it's time to activate my master plan. So to make sure Misa did not confess, he had Rim make her relinquish ownership of the death note so it would wipe all of her memories of it. Then had Rim and Ryuk swap notebooks. And in the notebook, he wrote down two BS rules that basically said, if the person that is using the notebook hasn't wrote down a name in 13 days, they die. And if you destroy the notebook, all the humans that have used it will die. So he Damn. told Rim, go give this notebook to a greedy, power-hungry bastard and let them become Kira, while I give myself up to L, relinquish ownership of the death note, and go into solitary confinement for a total of 50 days. And that's what Light did. Because on day seven of his confinement, Light gave up his ownership of the death note and lost all of his memories of it to take all suspicion off of him. And on day 15, the murder started back up again. And the person murdering these people was Mr. Kiyosuke Higuchi of the Yotsuba group. So him and this group decided to kill other businessmen to further the growth of their company. These niggas was Disney just building a bigger monopoly. But they downfall was they had some rats and that was these two right here because they basically sold out and was talking to l the whole time so over time after light and misa was released from confinement and l and light the two smartest niggas on the earth working on the case simultaneously ended up figuring out that it was higuchi so one night they end up baiting him out with a fake broadcast saying that they're about to reveal who kira is so later on while this man is speeding down the road he ends up getting stopped by a cop so the cop do his thing, he like, License and registration, please. So Higuchi's like, Aight, aight, aight. But this man was not reaching for the license, he was reaching for the death note. And he made the Shinigami ideal so he could see the officer's name. So he wrote bro's name down, then just hit the gas and took off. So this man starts saying, whole high speed chase, running from this cop. And about five seconds later, the cop ends up having a heart attack and crashes into the back of a truck. Another victim by truck coon, damn this nigga's on a tear. So that man L said all units arrest this nigga and I kid you not this shit went from death note to Tokyo drift so this man had the whole task force chasing him L light and watery in the chopper and they was not playing games they said this shit is tonight so while this man Higuchi is 
speeding on the road. This man runs into a police blockade. So he ends up getting cornered and he is trapped. So he tries to drive the other way. But FaZe Watery is up here on the helicopter and says, not on my watch, fuck boy. And shoots his tire out, makes him spin out, and he crashes into the wall. And it was over for Higuchi. They surrounded that man. So they cuff him, pin him down, and they start interrogating him. Now here is Beat his ass. This Beat his ass. Manipulator. Plan comes full circle. So while they're interrogating him, Higuchi tells him that there is a notebook that allows him to do all of his killings. So Light Dad goes in and searches the car, and he finds the death note. So when he touches it and starts looking through it, he ends up seeing the room and freaks the f out. So then the other detective comes over, and he says, Chief, are you all right? The fuck you screaming for? Oh, shit! <laughs> so that man, L, says, bring the notebook over to the helicopter. So L gets the notebook and just starts staring into nothingness, just going into a deep thought. But he ended up realizing there has to be more than one notebook because there were two Kiras. And while that was happening, Light was like, let me see it. And Light grabbed the notebook and started tweaking. Bro, looked like he entered the Avatar state. Every single memory came back into this man's head. So L was like, uh, bro, are you good? And Light was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm perfectly fine. It swaps over to his face and it's over. This nigga just thinking, yes, yes. I've won! <laughs> All according to plan. So this man pulls out a piece of paper that he had in his watch, plucks himself and makes him bleed, and writes down Higuchi's name with his blood. And 40 seconds later, while they're taking him back to the car to arrest him, Higuchi has a heart attack, falls to his knees, and dies. And look at this man's face, bro. It is all over. It was just about to get worse from here. So they get back to headquarters and they start looking over the death note and they find those fake bogus rules that Light made. And that fake 13 days rule basically cleared him and Misa's name. So they were off the hook. So this is when Light's mass manipulation went over. That's when he should have left it. He should have left it right fucking there and it would have been over. But no, he got Fucking greedy, bruh. Uh, he got greedy. Fucking light. Oh my god. He should have left it right there, but he got fucking greedy. Her board. He made Misa go find the other death note, gain all of her memories back, then left a note saying, Yeah, you remember that guy, L? Find his real name and kill him. So she makes the Shinigami ideal again, cutting her lifespan in half again. And he makes her start killing people again. And this is where Rim ended up really realizing what Light's full plan was, and that was to get suspicion back on Misa so that Rim would have to intervene and kill L to protect Misa because Rim deeply cared about Misa. So it was pretty much wraps from here. The power goes out and she didn't already kill Watery. This old man fighting for his life. So he ends up deleting all the data and then a few seconds later, it happens. L has a heart attack falls over and before he dies the last thing that he sees is this evil dick-headed ass smirk just to rub it in at the last second and the lights went out l was dead no, that's what he went overboard bro wait is his name blicky kid now here comes the attitude swap up look at this fucker he's like Gonna sugarcoat it. I really do hate this nigga. But I have to admit, game is game. This man is the best mass manipulator right beside this bastard. So then later he ends up finding Rim's pile of ashes because she died because she was saving Misa and Light just casually takes his death note back. So after this, Light was about to go on another mass murder requiem. This man stands at the top of the building, pulls out his pen, and just started going on a rampage. Fucking These orchestra. people that were on the task force that were basically convicts, yeah, it was raps for them. Bootleg Nina Williams. She's out here riding her motorcycle. She has a heart attack, crashes the motorcycle, and dies. And this next one was tragic. This dude right here, Iber, his wife and kid walks in the room, and the kid's like, Daddy! just to see his dad's corpse fall on the ground. 
Oh, man, and y'all remember the Yotsuba group? They thought they were scot-free. Rinji gets up and tells Suguru that we did it, man. This is a new start for Yotsuba. Yeah, man, our stock is about to roar. Just for this man to fall over, pour up blood, and old boy right oh, here knew shit. he was cooked. He has a heart attack, and every single member of the Yotsuba group died. But light didn't stop there. Now, I have a theory, because they didn't confirm this, but I honest to God think that this is true. While he's on this killing montage, it shows all the past news reporters that have reported on this man. Now, you see this woman right here. Keep this. On this board where it shows a bunch of criminals being wiped out, she is on the bottom right, and her picture goes out. So that tells me this nigga killed all of the news reporters that said some shit about him. I'm sick. I'm actually fucking sick. Nigga said, fuck bad press. Y'all can suck my dick, TMZ. And after this, it just got worse. Over the next five years, Light's killings increased tenfold because there was nobody that could stop him. So this is the time where this man had to have dropped off at least a hundred thousand plus nigga he got cocky bro he got cocky light got way too cocky for his own good when it came down to it like like i said he he, he could have stopped before the fbi but he got cocky criminal wise you know i think I th he just got cocky America claimed him as law, judge, jury, and executioner because they couldn't do nothing. Look at George Bush old ass. You know he ain't do shit. But I can't blame the old nigga because life's reign of terror just got worse. Damn. And worse. Damn. And worse. I mean, the nigga can control Truck Coon on command. And the most chilling thing this man ever did was go to L's grave and just start derangingly laughing his ass off. Look at this nigga. He has his ass up. He's twerking at his grave and spitting on his shit. I mean, look at that thing. That shit is moving. This nigga Light said, Ate my testicles, nigga. And with Light's victory, we now move into our final set of evidence. Now, at this point in time, Light has taken the mantle of L. Yes, Light just didn't kill L. He took his whole flow, his whole name. And L's successors, Nier and Mello, are now on his ass. So Mello and the Mafia decided to kidnap the director of the MPA so they could trade him for the Death Note. So guess what Light did? Ding, 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 you probably guessed it. Light kills the director of the MPA so the Mafia will lose their leverage but guess what that's just the start of this last little list that i have so you want to hear some more terrible shit i got you so since light killed the director of the mpa Mello and the mafia decided let's kidnap this man's sister so they could get more leverage so after this whole trade went down and they got back his sister she was so traumatized by this experience her mind was broken she was so fucked up she couldn't even talk had her in a wheelchair and everything at Arkham Asylum and his sister was sadly a victim of his actions but guess who also was a victim of his actions his daddy yeah this man used his dad as a pawn so mm. to get back that death note light decided to relinquish his and made Misa send a message that said Kira will be relinquishing his death note to somebody in the task force and guess who took ownership of that death note and made the Shinigami ideal his daddy so later on they end up raiding Melo's hideout and at the end of the raid light tells his dad to confront Melo so while light's dad is confronting Melo light's dad was hesitant about writing his name down and killing him so one of the dudes that was left alive shoots his dad in the back and Melo blows up his hideout so after this they are in the hospital and life's dad is about to die so you know what this sick pathetic bastard does he says dad please before you go you've got to write his name down is this nigga serious come on old motherfucker help me out here damn it do something useful for your son before you can die oh my god get him the fuck out of here get him the please black get him the fuck <laughs> Out of here. <laughs> like, I can't begin to tell you how pathetic this shit was. Yo, dad is about to die. Because of your actions, by the way, and you begging this to get somebody's name for your personal gain. Sick bastard. And this wasn't even the worst part. Since his dad had the Shinigami eyes, he looked at Light and said, Oh, sonny boy, I'm glad to see that you not Kira because I could see your lifespan. 
said, I could die at peace. This man's dad died not knowing that his son was Kira because he relinquished that death note. Because the thing was that if you were a user of the death note, a person with Shinigami eyes could not see your lifespan. So his dad died living a lie. Sickening shit. And his blood is on Light's hands. So this man joins Doflamingo in the Patricide Club. Now. Give me 30 seconds so I can show you the trading strategies that allow me to become a full-time trader and quit my job two years ago while also designing a lifestyle I love. We have come down to our last major victim, and this one was just peak manipulation. So while Kira's influence was growing stronger in the world, and Light was out here inciting riots to stop Nier, he needed the right people to spread his message. So the ex-Kira, Teru Mikami, who was basically Light's right-hand man that he personally chose after making Misa relinquish her death note again and losing all of her memories, decided we need a change in management. So this fat nigga, Demigawa, who is the leader of Kira's kingdom and is the spokesperson for the this cult decided to stream their Sunday service on TV. Tell me how you feel now. Yes, Lord. So Mikami said, fuck these niggas. So he deletes every single one of these lunatics on live TV. Delete. Not the church he music playing in the back. As for last, he said, the doors of the church are open, but not for you. So after Mikami disbanded the Church of Kira, he chose a loyal supporter of Kira to be the next spokesperson. And that was Kiyomi Takada, Light's ex-girlfriend back in college. So mm. you see where this is probably gonna go, right? <laughs> So Light convinced the task force that we should use Shorty to get some more leverage on Kira and find out who that is. But obviously, Light had ulterior motives with her. So one night, he meets up with her. So here go this manipulation riz. How you doing, Shorty? You looking as fine as ever. <laughs> he just had her in the palm of his hand. So he basically told her, look, Shorty, I'm Kira. And I see that my dog has chosen you as my spokesperson. So I'm going to make you the guy of the new world and she was so ecstatic she was entrenched in this nigga and yeah y'all could probably guess what happened after this now they don't show it but let's be real light like the pipe on her ass of course the cell so after the light cell. got done getting his freak on and getting Takata to work with him he had shorty basically being another Kira so he made Mikami make a fake notebook and sent the action Actual names to Takada, bringing her in and making her do some damn killing. And she was just dignitized. She had that Jeffrey Dahmer syndrome when Shorty's was just fiending over that nigga for some odd reason. But time for shit to get crazy. So one day, Takada ends up getting ran up on and kidnapped by Mello. So a couple hours pass, and Mello started trying to interrogate her. Bro pulled out the gun and said, All right, chop, chop. Take off them clothes and start shaking them booty cheeks. I'm gonna blow your fucking brains out, bitch. So while she starts stripping, she ends up taking a piece of the death note out that she had in her bra. So while Mello's transporting her in the back of his truck, she ends up calling Light, and she on the phone saying, Oh my God, baby, please. Cheeks. So Light said, baby, calm down. Now, did you do what I told you to do if you ever got in a situation like this? Yeah. And that is what she did because she wrote Mello's name down and killed that nigga. But Light being a sick and twisted bastard decided, nah, I'm gonna get as much out of you as I can until your gas tank is empty, bitch. So Light told her on the phone, the time has come. Execute. So he made her call up Mikami and made her tell him, send me as many criminals as you can so I can go on a killing spree. So while she was doing that, Light was just sitting in the car on the way to go pick her up. And in his head, he just said, man, you know what? You should have never went to that frat party without me, bitch. And it was all over for Shorty. Light made her unalive herself by burning herself alive and setting everything on fire to get rid of every single piece of evidence. And just like that, that was Light Yagami's final victim. Because the next day on January 28th, this nigga got... Hey!
<laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie, with the final confrontation with Nier, Light got cooked. This nigga yeah. was so sad, bro. Yeah, he Nier got cooked. Nier read this motherfucker like a book. It was actually fucking hilarious seeing this nigga lose his mind because Mikami utterly failed. So Light tried to pull a fast one, but Matsuda just dumped bullets in his ass. So for Light to escape, Mikami just unlocked himself. Nigga committed seppuku, and Light just ran away, but they didn't even bother chasing him. He was done. So Ryuk watching over the whole thing was just like, well, I'll give it to you like you was one entertaining motherfucker, but I need my notebook back. Hey, and on yo. January 28th, 2010, anime's most deadliest serial killer dies of a heart attack. Man, how everything comes full fucking circle. Yep, circle of fucking life. Lion King, nigga. Yeah, all right, everybody, it's time for our final tally. Now, obviously, keeping kill count in this is literally impossible because there were mad off-screen deaths. And he just wasn't killing criminals. He was killing innocent people, too. And also people with just petty crimes. He probably killed your ass if you got a speeding ticket because this motherfucker was just evil. I mean, you know how many families he probably tore apart doing this shit? A lot! Shit, what like equals one prayer for these families, man? But here's what we'll do. If one of y'all can get an actual reasonable number and people actually agree with you, I'll pin the comment and we'll make that our number. But well, you know what that number gonna be right now? Drum roll, please. A lot. A lot. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I ain't lying. Anyways, man, case closed. And that is another installment of Anime's Deadliest Serial Killers. So, hope y'all enjoyed and uh, get ready, baby. Because our next Shredder. This one we Shredder. Done. I'm already giving you a warning right now. So, until then, I'm out this home. Yeah. Yo. Light went outside of shit. Wait, I'm see. Who got the pen? Who got the pen? Nobody got the pen. Light could have. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read two of the comments. Fun fact, for all his crimes, including one sequel with continuation manga like sentence in the U.S. will be 3, 33, 89, damn, 4,492 likes and 30, damn, yeah, so honestly, Light should have stopped after the FBI, uh, before the FBI agent, if he would have stopped before the FBI agent, we wouldn't expect like, this thing. Or after the whole mind wipe thing, he should have stopped. He went on for five fucking years. I applaud Light, but I disapplaud him. That's not a word. Only reason because he got fucking greedy. He got greedy. He went on say, went like a little bitch. So this has been Cheesy the Chan. Oh, he almost had two million. Congratulations, my boy. And we will see you guys next time. Peace.